It's all about what does it take to be a techno artist. And today we have Holger Nilsson here on the couch, Boho, and via Zoom, DJ Emerson. Hey. Hi. And before we start, I would say, um, let's introduce yourself and tell the people who you are and what are you doing. And to give a little, and then we jump straight up into the conversation. Okay, my name is Holger. Um, I'm in the scene since, uh, I don't know, 25 years. Formerly known as, uh, I, I did together with my partner Amazon, label Kidders. Now I did some labels like Ragnarök, and uh, my DJ name at the moment is Holger Nilsson. That's, I think that's enough. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm DJ Emerson. I'm running the label Microphone. I got to know Holgi back in the days. It was, I think, 96 or something. And that was when my career basically started as well, also 25 years ago. And I'm still happily pr producing and playing techno in the clubs all over the world. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, hi. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, um... I'm running Janowitz Records and George Robbing Records, uh, the two labels since eight years, and I'm Boho, an artist based in Berlin and Cologne. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, then let's start just with a simple question. And you're um, like artist long in the scene, and what, what makes a techno artist in general? What is the unique thing of a techno artist? Very good question. Um, what is a techno artist? Um, as a techno artist, Emmy, sag mal du was. Okay, sure. Well, I think the most important point is that you have some kind of passion for whatever music you do. If it's techno, if it's house, if it's electro, if it's reggae, if it's drum and bass, whatever. But you need to have the passion to live this music, to, to produce it and, and to bring it to the people. I think that's the most important thing. Nowadays, many people want to be something specific, but for me, it doesn't work that way. You have to, you have, to have a passion to, to, to release music or to bring music to the people in a, in a way that has not been done before, maybe in your own creative way. So I think the most important thing about this is to have a passion for a certain music. Yeah, that's right, because you have to think about uh, to be a DJ is not, 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 even, uh, not, not only a happy life, you know. You also have times when, when, when the business is not so good, you know. And in this time, if you don't have the passion, um, you, you, you won't come over this. Over this um, also, du kommst nicht über die Zeit hinweg, wenn, wenn du nicht die Leidenschaft dazu hast. Yeah, yeah I you think that's... Make... Exactly. I think that's a problem. Like always, or, or often, many people saw the uh, see the the good things, um, but not the bad things. And I think you have to be, you have to this passion into this music. And oh. yeah, that's that's the thing. Yeah. Totally agree for that. So uh, the passion thing is something like uh, when Corona came, for example. So yes. if you have this straight plan A, just follow the A plan and be an artist. Invest all your energy inside this and don't look for a plan B. So because if you love music, if you really like to be an artist and give and invest a lot of time, money and whatever. So yeah. I think uh, this is the thing you... Uh, that's the base you need to have. Yeah, uh, yeah you, you talked about like um, the Corona pandemic. Like, how did you survive this this trouble, like this situation, the whole situation? For us, the situation was from day one to day two, we have, were um, unemployed, so we had no business anymore. So no, no. Um, yeah, so so um, you you have to search for another way, and, and and you have you have to you have to go both ways. On on the one side, you have to, to you have to run your business, to to run your labels, and to to, to try to 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 keep the, the brand alive. <coughs> and on the other side, you have to take care of your money, you know, because it was uh, for us, uh, it was really hard in 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 in, in, this, in the last two years to to um, yeah to 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 hold your your business on on a level, you know. Yeah, it was a really hard hustle also for me because uh, for 2020, so I had uh, already planned a world tour and it was cancelled and so many headaches, so many passion invested, so many time and then it's a cut, it's a 
really, really bad happening and I can really recommend to have good friends, to have a circle of people you can trust and talk to each other if you have some kind of depression or whatever. Feel easy to talk about it and um, just as a tip, um, don't be alone in this time and try to manage that uh, that you find maybe in, in the corona time another um, part of a job in the music scene. So for example, we invest a little bit more in productions, organizations for ghost productions, for mastering, stamps and whatever. So um, usually my business is more for Boho uh, earning money for gigs. So that's the main mm -hmm. point. But <clears throat> That was cut and I had a new uh, look where can I make some money, look for more marketing for my labels, try to push them on uh, Spotify and whatever this uh, kind of thing. So, so that's searching for different different yeah, ways. Exactly. To yeah, he told exactly the point because the, the main money in the business you earn with, with DJ gigs or with, with, with events, if you make events. So to doing labels, it, it, it's a funny thing, you know, but you, you won't earn a lot of money with yeah. it, you know. So you, 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 can you live from from, from the money you earn from the labels? No. It's uh, always a real investment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and from day one to day two, it, it, all the events were gone, all the DJ gigs were gone, so no money at all, you know? And, uh, and, uh, and this, is what, this is what I mean, it's a really hard time, so you have to, searching for a plan B. Your plan B was to, to do yeah. business in the business, business and my, in and the my business, plan B, exactly. I, 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 got, I was working in, in other jobs, you know? And yeah. besides this, I was, I was working at my business. And, you know. yeah, yeah. yeah, I was thinking the same, so, Back in the days, I was hairdresser, and I was thinking about, okay, go for a hairdresser, but I really don't like that, and I had a real look, what can I do? So I managed a few of guys uh, to help them to reach some labels uh, and handle the releases for others, charge a little fee and something like this, or smaller labels, yeah. we had them to grow, and I give them my knowledge and make some master classes, something like this, but all in the music scene, so in this circle. But also during this time, it was a little bit more canceled. The uh, fee was lower, everything yeah, yeah. was super low. And yeah, yeah, it's a hustle. It's a really a hard hustle yeah, during this so, time. Yes. Because, yeah, the main yeah. thing is uh, earning gigs, uh, yeah. earning money from gigs. DJ Emerson, do you want to add something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. For me, it was a tough time as well. At first, I thought, okay, great, I have some some time to invest in, in, in the studio and produce new mu music. But in the end, you know, I was producing and producing and I didn't get the chance to test it out in the club. And at some point I was asking myself, what am I doing here? What for am I doing it? No, I'm, the music I make is DJ music and no DJ was able to play it. So I kind of lost focus in it too. And it just slowly started again with the beginning of this year that I was able to to produce tracks that make sense and in, in the way that they need to make sense for me and just as Holgi, i i worked at the vaccination center in in tegel and that was my way of of progressing yeah. this this situation i i thought at least i can help to to get the people vaccinated as fast as possible so we can have parties again so difficult times for sure <laughs> Yeah, what, what does you think, um, like, what does you, do you think is the future looking um, for you as an artist or labels um, after the pandemic? Like, is there a big change or is it the same like before? So what are you thinking about that? Do you mean a big change uh, in the scene or a big change? Yeah, for, for, for you as an artist. I don't know. So the, the, the business at the moment, I, I would say it's, it's 30%, 40%. And we, we will see how, how fast it will grow up, you know. And um, the, the pandemic shows me that from day one to day two, it, it can all, all can end, you know. So, yeah. but but on, on the other side, we we are we are what what Emerson told the passion. If you have the passion, you will move forward, you know. Move so forward, we do this yeah. business now since 30 years. Or I, I, I start with with electronic music in Berlin, 1989. And uh, since since this times we are we are in the electronic music business, you know, and and you, you can't stop it, you know. So, but but, man wird vorsichtiger. Yeah. 
Yeah, so for example, we tried to uh, create a new label, a third label, and uh, we add some electronic, more this kind of Gesaffelstein techno. These tracks are three minutes short, and um, we get some good uh, feedbacks on Spotify and whatever. That was one idea from us to create something for more money earnings and um, yeah, a, a new thing, but in the music scene. And um, yeah, I think this or whatever the, the passion thing. So yeah. Yeah. You want to add something, DJ Emerson, to this one? To to what was exactly the question? I somehow like lost. Like, how does the future look for an artist? Like, what do you think about that? Well, at first I, I thought it might look quite dark, but I think September and October were really good months for me where I had a lot of gigs and the people were super excited. So in that sense, not so much changed as I was actually afraid of, but how it will look exactly, I, I, of course I cannot tell. I just hope that we, we get some kind of regularity back anytime soon and can, and can go on with, with, with our life as, as professional musicians and DJs, you know. Thanks. Uh, let, yeah, let's jump back to, your, um, to you as an artist and what were your steps to success like? When did you see you successful and what did you do to become this artist you now i think i had the big luck that i was um, in berlin when 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 techno starts and in, in in those days it was it was easier to find your you find your piece from the cake in, in the business you know and um and Again, we are with passion. So we, we, when, when electronic music starts in Berlin, we, we like the music, we go dancing, and then we start to think about we, we can do our own events and can do parties. And, and then we did parties, and then uh, we, we, we start to, to, to work with, with some other DJs, and then we start a booking agency, and then uh, you start your own career, you know? And, and then, uh, I, I don't know, uh, then we start to, to produce music, we start to release music on vinyl, and stand step by step um, with the passion and, and with the work on, on, on those also diff different projects, the, the own career starts, you know. So Amazon and me, we did together Killers FM, and um, yeah, we, we uh, it, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a, a career goes step by step, not from day one to day two, so, but but in, in those days it was you have to work on 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 some on some things like producing music, bring out music, and and then um, you, you see it, it works and yeah and, and it and yeah, but but you have to push it always forward. And how do you see it works? Like when do you see it works? The promoter make make an an an, 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 an a booking request for me or for him, you know, and 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 so so does this scene reagiert auf dich yeah, auf yeah. deine Arbeit die du machst ja. Yeah? Yeah. And for me, the big luck was that I had Holgi on my side when it all started for me, because I was working with him at timing booking and he basically knew the first steps to take and I listened carefully to him and he told me, uh, look, you're a great DJ, but you need to release music to get, get known internationally or, or outside of Berlin. And I saw that it's actually working when I did my first release. It was on Kiddos already. We had already the label together and Vespam played my my track at the Love Parade at the Siegessäule and that was like the first thing for me where I thought okay this might work somehow. And you have to remember in those days you don't have Facebook, you don't have social media, you don't have yeah. you know, the only the only way to 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 um other you, you can release music, that, 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 that you know, or, or, or make, make some interviews in magazines, something like this, but, but no social media at, in those times, so it was all a bit more down. Um, yes, the point uh, was a little bit different than the usual part from a, a regular DJ, so I am becoming a DJ after I run the label since uh, four years, and then I'm becoming more a fan of Oh, I can do it also as DJ, why I didn't start the career. And um, yeah, it was a funny process because I got uh, many requests from any bookers or uh, some, uh, some guys 
because they thought that I'm DJ, but I was never a DJ. Um, it was just a situation that I was throw in the middle and decide then, okay, let's do something because I have this circle of people, I, I, this uh, request and whatever. And then I decide, okay, go this way. And the first steps of uh, success was when uh, some guys co told me, hey, we can do some releases on this and this labels. And I was interested, okay, go for it, produce some music. And in the end, some really big names like Oliver Untermann and some others played my tracks. Uh, Richie Horton uh, gave a lot of support. And then there was a point when I said, okay, that's the part uh, I really like to go and push all my energies. Uh, I bite up the circle of um, music which I play and uh, release also on the label. It's a little bit uh, mixed the boho sound and the Janowitz sound, and then we decided, okay, let's go for this direction uh, because of the feedbacks, so, or advertising, or any uh, platform, uh, newspapers, they send it some requests, and then I think there was the point when oh. we uh, feel, okay, it's going on. Is it important to be a producer, or is it enough to be a good DJ nowadays. So, what do you think? <laughs> well, nowadays I actually think you have to be good on social media and everything else is, will come by the way. When I started, it was important to also be able to produce records because you could reach a certain stage in your career just with being a good DJ. Like for example, Woody did, he didn't release for a long time. He was resident at AVAC, he was a, amazing DJ, but at some point he also needed to, to put out releases and started his Puma killer label to get to the next step. And that was like basically the situation when I started. Nowadays, I don't think it helps so much if you're, if you're a really good producer and you, you don't know how to, to show or expose yourself on social media, it won't help much. And I, I, I remember times, I don't know, it's like 15 years ago, there were some producers from, from Frankfurt, they were really famous, they were really great producers, they have big hits, but they were horrible DJs, you know, they were <laughs> producers, you know, no DJs, so I think if, if your passion is to be a DJ, then be a DJ, you know, mm -hmm. but, but if, if you want to, if you have a, if, if you want to produce music and be a DJ, then do this, you know, but it's, it's not important to do both, in my, from my perspective. Yeah. Like in, in streaming, streaming changed this, this scene totally. I think it's you, to, you talked about vinyl, and, but what what about streaming? Like, how important is it for a DJ to be into the Spotify, Apple Music things? Um, From my perspective, it's a part of all. It's it's, it's a part, you know. So, so you, you can have t 10 million streams on Spotify, but 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 it, it, it's it's not safe that people know you. You you know. So you you have to you have to do social media. You have to do this and that. So I'm um, streaming at the moment. It's 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 just a part of of the whole cake, you know. You can live from Spotify. If you have 10 million streams a month, you can live from it. Otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise not. Yeah, I think Eminem can live from Spotify quite well, but I don't think there are much techno artists who can live from Spotify. Yeah. You and know how much you get for one for one stream. Yeah. And if you reach the top as an artist, or if you be there um, and you say, "Yeah, okay, now I'm successful. How can I stay there? Like, what is the way you handle this?" I think it's more harder to stay than to than to to, to rise up. So yeah. you, I, yeah, that's I, the reason I, why I asked. Like, it's I think it's harder than to stay on the top than to go to, to reach the top. So I don't know. So you, you have you have some some diners hours like Sven Veit or Kyle Cox or you know they they are in the scene since ever. You know, but but you have many DJs. Um, they they were really famous and nobody knows the name nowadays. You know, so I I don't know. It's it's. It's, it's a, perhaps it's a mixture between your personality and, and that you do the business right, you know, but, but um, to, 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 to become famous, it's, it's hard, but to, to, to stay famous, stay for, famous for, yeah. for years, it's, it's more harder, yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of distractions if you're really famous. It's like basically the same with all the rock stars, you know. There are many one-hit wonders, 
but there's just one band like the Rolling Stones that do it for, for many years. So if you get caught up in, in women and alcohol and drugs, you won't make it so long. <laughs> it's quite difficult in our scene, actually. Yes, uh, these days it's a little bit uh, mixed between you need to do some marketing extra, you need to be on a point you, that you get seen everywhere. So it's a new thing in 2020 or 21, uh, which you need to deliver as an artist. Back in the days it was not uh, working or so important uh, to have this social media uh, bullshit. And um, I can remember... I remember it's uh, there's one DJ. He's Car uh, his name is Carotte. Uh, he never produced back in the days uh, music, <laughs> so he was just a super good DJ, and he's becoming famous because of super cool sets, because he really loved to mix sets. So uh, he's maybe still a DJ. Yeah, he's he's such a good DJ, but as a producer, so uh, he. I think, or I hear, I don't know, I don't want to spoil something bad, but um, that he gets some help or whatever, and it's completely fine, and I totally agree, because there are always two parts between an artist, so if you are a producer or a DJ, for example, I am more a DJ, I hate producing, so I'm getting bored to listen to shitty loop five hours, uh, just one minute, so it makes me bored. And um, I really like uh, to mix sets, and that's my whole passion. But on the other side, there are a lot of producers who invest, uh, have many, many, many knowledge and put all the energy inside, but they are not good DJs or entertainers. And um, these days, you need everything in yeah. one. And yeah, that's a fact which is a little bit tricky sometimes because we don't have that much time to yeah. get this knowledge because, so for example, when I started, so I start from the beginning and then was, zack, okay, you need to be there. Yeah. And okay, uh, but I can just mix. And then knowledge comes a little bit later. I uh, cross, I get some uh, support from different artists or get invitations in studios and we create some, uh, uh, tracks or a piece together with the helping hand, so I totally uh, fine with that uh, because many I know so many in this scene who get a helping hand, and it's completely fine because you can't be everything, but you need to be yeah, everything to in be everything, 2021. Yes. That's the problem. Yeah, because so like if you're just a producer and you're not that entertainer, it doesn't yeah. like. Um, you're not producing on the stage, for example. Exactly. That's why I'm managing a few guys, and they are only producers, and they have no idea how to make a good posting, whatever, on Instagram stories and yeah. this budget. And on, on the stage, they look like if they if they check their email, you know, on yeah, the computer. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. So, <laughs> and uh, these guys need the helping hand for the marketing or for other uh, stuff. Yeah. So, I think. Um, you just need a cool partner or uh, another person who give you the hundred percent which you need in order uh, these days. And what about a booking agency? How necessary is it for an artist? I tried many and many booking agencies don't move their ass. So I made a m way more better job by myself because they just push the big artists. And if you have any booking agency, I don't know, Solomon or two other big names, they just invest because they get the booking fee for these guys even if they uh, get a booking fee for 200 euro for a gig from us. So it's nothing for them. So if they make a booking for Solomon, surely they invest more time and uh, everything when they just do a booking and get 1,000 euros. So it's totally uh, the thing. And that's why uh, booking agencies is always a tricky, tricky thing. Th yeah. thing. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I, I think um, um, we, we also run a booking agency, but but as a booking agency, you you're not a wizard, you know. You you can't also, you can't yeah. So so um, I'm with you. It's, it's a tricky thing. So if you are in, if you are if, if you are a famous artist, it makes sense to have a booking agency because they they do your business. You know you you can't you can't take care of your business by yourself. 
but if you are a, if you are an unknown artist it's 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 mostly not possible to to sell an unknown artist to promoters because promoters want to make business you know promoters want to book a dj because they want to make business and if you if you pull 1000 people then i can i can ask for the promoters for i don't know 2000 euros you know but but if you are a, a totally unknown djs and you pull no pull no people and and bring no guests into the clubs and make no cash at at, at then then um, the promoter won't book you you know and, and you can do nothing at a booking agency so uh, uh. And then we come back to that thing that you need releases, uh, that you get seen or people makes you as artists more attractive if you have a release on Octopus and Katamuka or whatever, that the promoters say, hey, this guy released music on Katamuka and I feel that makes my event more attractive. And that's also the part why you need to do it as an artist to get more seen, get more requests from the promoters and some uh, other guys. Yeah. DJ Emerson, do you want to add something to this topic? Yeah, well, I think uh, booking agencies are still very important, but with all this business techno thing and the huge fees that the big players are charging, it got more and more difficult, you know, because back in the days you could place a newcomer DJ alongside a well-known headliner as a booking agency, but this doesn't really work anymore because the promoters pay so much for for a big DJ, then they just invite their, their residents to play for free in the beginning, you know, it's, it's difficult. For me, at this point, the booking agency is not so important because people basically know by now how to get in touch with me and, and if they want to book me, they will reach me somehow, but they wouldn't know me, it would be very difficult, I think, so. Yeah. Um, oh, damn, I forgot my question. Um, what I want to say, like, and with the labels thing, um, how can I get as a newcomer to this, to the labels, the, the important labels for me for a career? So it's just dropping out my, my, my demos or what I have to do? If you're a good producer, I'm sure you will find a label, of course, and, and, yeah? and of, of course, with our labels, um, we, we hear every demo, and if the demo is good, we release it, of course. So I don't care if it's, it's, it's a famous name or it's a non-famous name, but, but if the music is good and if the music fits to my label, I release it. And um, so, but but you need you need to you you need to be good, and you you, you have to produce a, a quality, and you you and and you you have to be a vision with your sound. Then it, it works. But of do course. you need a big label, or it's enough to? Like it's, it's, it's it's I think it's 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 it's. It's not bad to have a good label or to have a famous label, yeah. you know, because um, it, it spreads your name better, you know, than, than a small label. But but you, you have to work on it, and and I think uh, no no DJ becomes famous, doch Oliver Koletsky, from one release, you know. <laughs> but 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 you, you, you have to work on it. You have to work on it. So one release, second release, and but but for for this you need to, the quality as a producer that that you that you are are able to. To, to get in, uh, get, um, also sich der Konkurrenz von großen Labels zu stellen, einfach. Yeah, ne? yeah but sometimes uh, the big labels didn't listen the tracks. So I know that from us that I'm super lazy with listening demos. I'm so sorry if you send us <laughs> some demos, but sometimes I, I check every email, but in the end uh, of the day, so we got so many requests and uh, I really like to pick by myself all the artists and I write them or the golden key is fucking connections. It's always in the business for so, yes. everything, yeah. even for uh, events, for promoting, for releases, connections. Make you attractive or make some friends. If Maybe if you like to be on Kidders, so you need to be a friend with him or him or with any artists from the label. You can discuss with the artist, hey, can you give me the email or can I send you my tracks that you give Holger the tracks to listen to it or something like this. That's the way how I work also. If a friend or another uh, artist from us sent me music from others, so I will listen to it and give the chance a little bit more than if you send just the, to the email. 
and um, that's why connections and this friendships and you need to be a totally little important bit yeah. in this. Yeah. yeah. If you nowadays to to to, to if, you, if you want to, to become a, a, a DJ, if you wanna you wanna become a famous DJ, you, you need you need to to work on your network. It's really important to work on a network, you know. And it it, it, it needs sometimes years to to build up a network. Go to the clubs. Yeah, you know, go to the parties. Go to parties, whatever yeah, you know. Yeah. So work on it. You you need to work on it, and, and this is your way to to. Uh, to, to become an artist, you know, to, to be an artist is not ju just to go to the gig and play and play. So you need to work on your network, you need to work on, on your producing, you need to work on your social media, you need to work on this, on that, and that's just really important. And, and this is your way. But but uh, we are at the beginning for this. You need passion, you know. If you have no passion for the music, if you need no passion for the job, then you get lost. Yeah, I think it's all about the passion, like when we mentioned in the, at the beginning. So actually, if you are a musician, so I think that's the whole thing. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Because uh, if you are not Solomon, so you're not on the top. And uh, it's always a hustle as a music artist. And uh, you need to uh, decide if you like to be in the hustle, maybe 80% in, the, in a, a whole career. That's nothing. It's sure it's safe that you earn money, that you're always be on point, whatever. So it's uh, always a tricky game there. And uh, yeah, you need to give all your passion then inside. I think that's the golden key for that. Yeah. And co and like we said, connections. But like there's, uh, every day there's so much music, uh, music uh, that will, will, re will be released. So how can I like herausstechen? Um, um, stand out, yeah. Stand out, like stand out um, to this big um, track, like the many tracks. You, you cannot plan it. Either you are a really fucking good producer or, and, and, and your music is outstanding. And if it's not, then uh, yeah, there's no guarantee that, that, your, that your music sticht raus. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even think it, it helps if you're, even if you're a genius producer, you have to make at first some connection to get your music released. So like the most exciting artists I discovered, it were basically guys that sent me thousands of demos and I never really took care or, or checked it probably and then they came to my gigs and after my gigs Thomas Hofknecht for example he gave me a CD and I talked to him and he said hey maybe you want to listen to it and it was a really nice talk I really liked the guy and so I listened to it and then I thought wow he's an amazing producer I want to do something with him and then he used microphone and district four and our labels to get the attention of someone like Adam Bayer and then it was more easy for him to to release on drum code because Bayer had played his microphone tracks had played his district four tracks knew his name and that's the way it kind of develops I think but at, at the very first step you need to have the passion to to send the emails and if it's not working you still need more passion to go to the club to penetrate the guy and <laughs> give him your music you know and if you do that at some point you will succeed i'm really sure and don't give up so i tried my one of my goals was to reach senso sounds because it's one of my top labels i really love that sound and I follow Oliver Hunterman since many years, <laughs> when I was not a DJ, and uh, I was thinking about, okay, how cool is that to release music like this, or this for the label, for myself, and then I marked this as a goal, and uh, <laughs> I really work on it, <laughs> to make friends from the circle, to connect them, to meet them in person, to say, hey man, I really love your fucking label. Here is my USB stick. Let's drink a coffee here, make this, this, this. That's the connection, friendship thing. You need to invest and... Uh, yeah, but I think yeah. it's good to have this, like, goal to um, release on this label, like, for yeah, you. Yeah. You really need to have yeah. some goals, so... Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, you need to set up some goals, big, big goals. And, for example, if you're a really strong techno artist, your goal would be to release on drum code or whatever. Yeah. And for me, it was sensor sounds, and um, I tried everything. So, and all other labels who are uh, more uh, smaller or whatever, or I reached, um, was cool for me, but it was not that uh, thing that I reached Stencil Sons. And then I tried every time so many stuff. 
changed the, the sounds from my tracks. I tried to get some better emails to reach them or whatever. So uh -huh. you need to find a way or a hustle to uh, go in this uh, uh, situation that. Yeah. yeah, never give up, so. Yeah, never give up. Passion and never give up, yeah. That's the golden key. So at the end, like, what advice would you give to younger artists? Never give up. 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 <laughs> Yeah, if you really love your job and uh, this music thing, so there's only plan A and follow it and go for it. Never give up with this. And, and just like, in the beginning, you, you shouldn't see it as a job, you know. Just, just in the beginning, you shouldn't see it as a hobby or as a passion, something like this. You shouldn't see you know? the money. You should, you, of, of course not, yeah, you know. You yeah. shouldn't, shouldn't see the money. So, so, so and, and, and then you can develop yourself, you know. But, but in the beginning, so be cool and, and work on yourself. So you have to work hard because uh, the, the concurrence is gross, no? Also. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, and I, I also think you really have to, to find someone like, like Holgi, for example, who is in the scene for a long time, who has connections, who knows all the steps. You need some kind of guide to, 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 to put you through this. Uh, I wouldn't have made it myself, I'm pretty sure, but Holgi gave me all the advice and all, all the little steps that it takes to, to succeed. And I think you, you really cannot do it all on your own just with producing good music. You need to, to go out of your comfort zone and try everything you can. And it's also, it's almost some kind of obsession that you need to be successful nowadays. Yeah. Great. Um, so, um, do you have some question, guys? No questions? Yeah, one question here. Hi. So, hey. more, more or less, <laughs> When was the first time that you realized that you Can want you to? Put this, please? When was the first time that you realized that you really want to start to do this? Because, like you say, you started, uh, and it's like sometimes you fail, sometimes was okay. There was a moment that you say, "Now I think that I'm, I want to keep doing this, and I want to keep trying until I, I don't know, I change my 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 goals." More or less, I know. For for me, it was when, when I moved to Berlin, 1989, and then it, it was the, this time when, when techno starts in Berlin. And when, when I was by my first visit at Tresor, I, I, I realized this is this is new. This is a new sound. This is a new style. This is it's, it's all is new. I want to do this, you know. And from from this from this point out out. Um, um, it, 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 There, there was, also ich, ich hatte keine zwei Meinungen, sondern ich, ich wollte das tun, ja, genau das wollte ich machen irgendwie, weil mich diese Musik fasziniert hat, weil mich das alles einfach beeindruckt hat, ne? Dies, dieser neue Sound, die neuen Klamotten, das neue Denken, dass alle miteinander feiern irgendwie und, und, und daraus ist dann alles entstanden, weißt du, aber das sind wir auch wieder bei der Leidenschaft, weil, ne? ohne Leidenschaft hätte es nicht funktioniert, also das hat, das, das hat halt einfach gebrannt und dadurch bist du dann, hast du dich entwickelt in diese Richtung. Ja, ja, ja kein Problem. So, es war nicht nur ein Grund, es gibt verschiedene Gründe, um das zu erreichen, oder? Ja. Ja, für mich. Sorry? Ja, ja, es gibt. Ja, let's keep go. go. For me, the, the kind of uh, moment that it all started was when I was at a party in 1994, where Sven Wade played, and <laughs> just never stopped. <laughs> 10 hours and I, I thought, wow, this is just, this is everything I, I want to do in my life. And <laughs> back then there weren't so much distractions, like Hoagie said, he didn't have any other opinion on this. He just thought, that's it, I want to do that. And it was the same thing I thought. Nowadays you would think, well, with the pandemic, does it make sense? And how can I, can I put myself in on social media and it's it's much more difficult nowadays but back then it was just wow that's it that's it was some kind of a epiphany where i thought yeah that that's the music i want to play that's that's what i want to do i want to be a dj and just play for hours and hours and make the people dance and freak out and forget all their problems and all that with with music that you can play anywhere in the world because it's not It's not the vocals that, that do the message, it's like the rhythm, the bass, the grooves, and everybody understands it, no matter what nationality he is. And that, that was what kind of sparked it all up for me. Yeah, so for me, there was a point, like I said, I started uh, with the label, and then there was always uh, thinking about why I 
don't start DJing because I can't put all my releases. This was one of the biggest things. So I all uh, all the time I uh, asked for the artist, hey man, we have this release. When we have this party, can you play two or three tracks of the release because I want to see how it works and whatever. And then I'm getting tired of this and I feel stupid to say, hey, Holger, hey, here, these tracks, can you show them? Um, because as a DJ, you have another vision. And uh, when you play, so it's sometimes spontaneous and not that kind, oh, I have these three tra tracks, ah. I need to play for him. And this was, uh, was one of the things I uh, really, <laughs> was uh, at the point, okay, it fucks me up to ask people, so I really want to do it by myself, but I can't mix. And um, <laughs> then there was another friend, we was talking, uh, he was from India, and he gave me this super inspiration and in my career start, more or less. He said, man, if you are a DJ, I book you to India, and I was thinking about that. Oh shit, I can put all my own tracks, releases from the labels there. Oh, cool is that to travel, go, go there, start my career in India. Wow, wow, let's go for it. And uh, this was the point uh, when I decided to start learning in the cellar with my friends, mixing and whatever. And um, then I was ready to taking over and started because of the label of the connections uh, uh, to go to Ibiza and play there. And my second gig then it was Ibiza Global Radio because of all, like I say, these connections. And then that was so attractive for me because I know it only from magazines and stuff like this. And I was, oh, I can play there, I'm nobody, but uh, they book me, and that's so amazing, and traveling, and it was always exciting for me, and super cool, and yeah, that, that was something what I wanted to yeah. do, and then I decided to be a DJ and start in this way. In those days, you need to learn mixing with, with, with vinyls, you know, not, not, not like, like today, you took on a synchro button, you know, and then the, the CD players mix it by, by themselves, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, by the way, so I uh, vinyl DJ, so I can't uh, mix vinyl that well. Uh, it's only a thing, so I, for fun, maybe at home, I never would play a vinyl set <laughs> by myself in a club because I am not perfect enough for that. So, um, I, and I have different ideas for uh, mixing. I like four decks, and if you mix four decks with vinyls, it's not possible. <laughs> so you're an alien. You have <laughs> ten crazy. arms or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a different thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, so uh, everyone is uh, starting in a different way like that. Yeah. yeah. Microphone. Like, like, two hour DJ set. Like, like, how can you get into like the storytelling in an hour set, two hour set? Like, I can understand there's so many DJs out there, but like, any thoughts on that? Like, what do you mean? So, can we go back? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> what? A two hour set is like, bullshit. You can't, you can't yeah. Even get into the rhythm, you know? Yeah. So, um, can you have an industry standard on that? Yeah, there, there's one thing I have in mind when I uh, looked at an interview from Honey Dijon. <laughs> she said, um, a mixing for one or two hours is like wanking, yeah. but without the final. If she plays a set for six hours, <laughs> it's like, okay, we're coming to the final, but was not fine. And then when she can play all night long and invest all the ideas from the beginning to the end, so you can mix different kind of genre and make it more unique, special. You have the whole night in your own hands. That's super sex. Yeah. And Super. yeah, that, that, that was from the interview. And uh, I really have this in my mind. And uh, for example, when I start a set, so I'm more into after a half hour sometimes, or maybe an hour, whatever, yeah? And then one hour more and it's, in, uh, it's over. So I'm always sad. Yeah. So then we start uh, to talk to the promoters and said, hey, uh, guys, what can we do that I can play three or four hours? The most uh, thing from the guys is uh, 
Yeah, but we like to add some uh, other artists to promote the event a little bit more, to add some more local artists. Uh, they play for, tr uh, for free, but uh, they bring 10 uh, other guys. It's always a money thing, so... Yeah, and it's, it's, it's also a problem, you know? It's, it's also a problem that, that the guests want to see a lot of DJs, you know? Even Berghain um, um, reduces the sets from four hours to three hours <laughs> because the people want to see in one night Ben Clock and Len Faki and Kobo Ziel yeah. all together, you know? So it, it, it's even a problem to... Be, as a DJ, I, I, like, I like to play six hours, I like to play eight hours, it's not the point, you know? But, but, but the public, the, the people coming to the club, they want to see more DJs, they want to see more names, you know? That's a, that's a big problem. So to even don't have uh, DJs like Sven Fett. Sven Fett was also known for playing 100 hours a piece, you know. He took t 1,000 pills uh, and, and, and he was playing <laughs> yeah, one week in, in, in a row, you know. So, no? And, and, and you, you don't have those DJs anymore, you know. Do we really, ha do we really have the statistic that the public wants to see more and more and more DJs? Like, who's the public, you know? Like, I think it's, it's, it's a bit an interaction. It's an interaction between the public and, and the promoters, you know. You have, for example, in Munich, I, I saw in Munich a lineup. I think it was Nina Kravitz, Len Faki, and Ben Clark, and, and, and Solomon, and Sven Fett, and God himself, you know, all were playing on, the, on this festival. Now, one hour. You know, and, and, and then, and then you, you, you educate the people in the wrong way, you know, the, because people expect from, from the next festival that all big DJs of the, of the whole world are playing on the festival. If not, they don't come, you know. So it's, it's, it's a bit of interaction, and it, it's a really diff difficult uh, development. Also, it's, it's a gefährliche Entwicklung, die da gerade so geht, ja. Yeah? Yeah, that happens many times in other countries. So, for example, in the Asian area, they add, uh, they booked me for a one hour, and I called the promoter, fuck you, man, one hour. I played 10 hours to play <laughs> one hour. I'm sorry, man. So, uh, that, that's not cool. So, just cancel the local act because I'm coming 10 hours here and I just want to give all my passion here inside but for one hour it's it's not enough so I really need a Did minimum to no no I just talk with them and uh, in the end it was a yeah, regular two minutes. hours gig <laughs> it was a two hours gig then and <laughs> it, it, it was super hard uh, to get these two hours because everyone has just locked uh, 45 Crazy. minutes or uh, an hour so I don't know. Crazy. That's a that's a thing. So uh, no other ways. Yeah. 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 And my mission is also in my contract that I play three hours. Then uh, two. Yeah. <laughs> that's my mission to show people that it makes more sense to make longer DJ sets because the artist can be more uh, creative and uh, give uh, give another part then so if you book me as an peak time dj uh, i have this i have to deliver only bombs but for example i really like to play sometimes a warm up set but i never get booked for a warm up set because i'm a more peak time dj then and it's always sad but because I really love to play that and people didn't expect that I can play that also. But if you book me for an all night long so I can show you what I can do and take you from the bottom to the journey. So I think we need to <laughs> rethink a little bit these yeah, uh, things. Rooms, yeah. Yeah. Maybe this, yeah. So don't uh, book f uh, six DJs, just book three and give three the three hours. Um, I would prefer one hour um, DJ set with a lot of technology stuff and excitement and uh, that people prepared for that and play um, a very nice and interesting set instead of like four, four hours of like boring uh, transitions. And um, I think um, it's, uh, it's absolutely great that um, uh, a lot of DJs are in the night because by this naturally you get a diverse um, kind of sound. Um, because also if you say, okay, I play f all night long, but um, finally, I don't know you don't, don't know personally, but most of the time those artists stand for their sound, for their kind of um, <coughs> approach, their kind of um, what they they are about and um, I think it's um, absolutely okay if you have in a night as a guest like um, different sets it's it's diverse it's variety it's uh, something which is great and um, so but, uh, but I have the totally opposite position just let me finish yeah. I understand your point um, as a DJ you don't want to stop never <laughs> of course but um, I think um, 
It's look, 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 look. Yeah, the, the, okay, the problem, the problem is, go ahead. If, if, if you, you, you told <laughs> that, that uh, you can play for one hour with, with a lot of technical stuff, I, I, I totally agree, I totally agree, you know, but if you are a DJ and you have one hour, then you play five hits, it's over, you know, or, or, yeah, or ten probably hits, for if example, if you, you know? play techno. No? So it, it was, it <laughs> if was you play a, techno and the track is ten minutes, then yeah. you have five minutes. Yeah, it, but yeah. it could be also an option to be more creative and play in one hour um, probably um, ten techno tracks, in, um, but that needs a little bit more Jeff preparation. Mills. So Jeff Mills plays 40 techno tracks. Tracks on one hour. Yeah, but that's <laughs> but there, there we are at the point of creativity. You know, what I'm saying, of course, if I'm if I'm the DJ and say, okay, my techno track is um, uh, eight minutes, and I make the transition uh, like um, in the last. Um, but one minute, hour is really short. One hour is really, yeah. really short. Really. I'm really a drum short. bass DJ, so I'm from the other. It's okay. a little fast mixing. You know, uh, yeah, bam, bam, it's bam, different. Drops, it's it's exactly. different. So uh, let's agree on it's also depending on what kind of it, genre. It depends on the music, and you want also on on side trance or uh, techno, especially melodic techno. I I think you cannot um, go different in mixing um, uh, melodic techno in, uh, instead of um, you know like having long transitions and get the people to journey. And it's different if you have like playing um, like hardcore or gaba or something where you have double drops and drum bass and bam 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 bam. Oh. So it's it's depending but on really what I you what you want bit. to play. Like for for me a DJ for me a DJ is. Um, Who's able to have a to have a range of sound, you know? So w when I play at, at the beach, for example, I won't play gaba music, you know. I, I want to play uh, some. Mm -hmm. you know? So for, for and then if you are a DJ, yeah, with probably with a, with won't a, get booked to the to the yeah, beach. Yeah, that's that's a problem. That's a problem. But but the, the, we are the point from her, you know. If you have time, if you have six hours, and I, I I'm with you. I I, I was booked in in, 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 in Paris at, at 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 Rex Club as as, 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 a, as an opening DJ, and I really loved it. I played three hours opening, and it was really great. And they told me you are the best opening DJs we ever heard, you know. But I, I, I was not interested to, to play the peak time, you know. But you need the time. And for me, a DJ, if, if you are, I'm, I'm in the business since 25 years, you know. And I have a range of music, you know. I, I, I have I, I, the, the minimal time, the, the techno time, the tech house times, you know. And all this you, you, you can combine in one set, you know. But you need the time to, to have it and, and to react sure. with the people, you know. Absolutely. But if you, have, if, if you have one hour, you will, you, will, you will push out your five hits or your ten hits or your 20 hits, you know. And then the hour is over, you know. And, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I agree on like techno music. I think uh, two hours would be minimum, but um, and it's 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 a business kind. <laughs> of, yeah, it's a business kind. Um, I can understand the promoter. And to be honest, if you are the guest and you see a lineup where like um, ten great artists um, are represented, or there's another party with um, uh, with one artist all night long, where would you go? But but. Joe, depends. How old are you? How, it no, no. Listen, how old are, how old are you? When 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 when, I, when we start music in Berlin with techno music, you know, we go to the Tresor, not even because DJ Tanit is playing there or DJ Rock is playing there. We going to the Tresor because of Tresor, but we want to hear this new thing techno, yeah. or we go to Planet because we want to hear this new thing techno. And sometimes I even I, did, I even don't know who's playing there because, but we know this this night we go to this club and you hear this new music, this new sound, you know. And and I, I don't care about names in those times, but now. I Nowadays, you're totally right. Nowadays, it's really important to have big names. You have a lot of names, you know, and this is a, this is a bad situation at the moment. Yeah? I'm 47, and I know all that time. And by the way, um, <laughs> Tarnit is a good friend of uh, Tarnit is a good friend of mine, and I saw him lots of times, and I always enjoyed that he played like a couple of hours. And I agree. When I was young, I don't care. Um, I was there about going crazy and pissed and whatever. But um, at the end of the day, also, I remember and, um, during that times, um, these big raves has been existing there, where, I don't know, like Tarnit, and, and also the, the, the lineup itself was, um, itself was crazy, because there was Marusha, and then there was yeah, some... Yeah. Uh, some and Max also Boon, the DJ Dick, Marusha, yeah. and West and then, Ham, yeah. then they played 160 BPM, the next track was IQ Records with 120 or whatever, and that was also, um, because the music was not like... Like straight, okay, there's one techno night, it's 130, probably 140, there you go. So what I need to say, if you uh, go to a party for an all night long DJ, it's always a little bit different. The marketing needs to be different uh, because if you uh, never heard Boho before, uh, but you take my journey and you will <laughs> say, okay, this guy can play different kind of genre. I will play some indie dance, techno mixed maybe with disco and this and this because I have so many ideas and I can bring them from uh, for the six hour set 
I'm yeah? with you. But I'm I with need you. I get the it. six hours to show it. So if you are just a, uh, it can be getting boring if you play only a, a set. So I know many, many famous artists, they just play the two or three hours straight in a row, just bangers. And there's nothing special because it's only straight and only, only some bangers. But no unexpected things. So, but the the guys who play um, all night long sets, for example, Karote or I don't know which, Whoever, which artist, it so matter. it doesn't matter. Um, this These guys are known for that they play different sounds than just uh, one one genre, for example. I get it, I get it. The, the thing is, um, <laughs> for, for example, when um, I was always, I mean, I'm a drum and bass DJ since ever, but um, I literally um, spice it up with a lot of um, other genre within the set. It's, um, but most, mostly just two or three um, tracks because it was always like the opposite what people expect. And the interesting for, uh, thing was half of a crowd like really got crazy, like, like freaking out, and the other was like, what the fucking hell is he doing? But you have to be, the, 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 um, be brave enough to do so. And um, I guess if you are like booked um, as a DJ and then you go for this three hours straight and just go the, the, the secure way and um, play that stuff. And this brings me to another point, I think, um, which is missing a lot um, today's in the DJ's um, sets. I've heard, especially, not, not especially in Berlin, that's probably wrong, but recently, um, uh, let's say if I, um, what I realize is that um, people are most of the time not prepared at all. They play like um, stuff randomly, it does not fit together, even um, with the technology, what's you possible. You go to the, the wrong moment. parties. Probably, let, but let me, fi let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Um, <coughs> so um, I think um, a DJ should be, um, um, if he has like two hours, it should be uh, probably the same prepared, um, like, like a band, they are also practicing. But I feel sometimes they play something, they even don't have cue points, they just, because they are mixing like minor, you know, but at the end what the outcome is like, okay, this clashes, this key clashes, this clashes, and, and, and you can always justify it in saying, yeah, but that's, um, that's my spontaneous creativity. But to be honest, um, I would prefer that people are, even if it's like they have a playlist and practice it to, to hell at home, and then fire it up, but you have like a one hour like crazy and things, okay, that's fucking awesome. And you, okay. can, you can only do some tricks and tips and, and, and tricks in mixing to have a, like a really awesome dope set if you practice it, if you prepare, if you have a playlist, if you say, okay, this is a double drop, this, that's yeah. my, my that's Interesting, my opinion man. about it. No. I no, think not, not completely me, not me, different. Not, not, not me, not, not me. Yeah, it's not completely different. I, 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 I know, I, I know in the early days, I know in the early days there were some DJs, they had vinyls uh, with, with, with stickers, yeah. one, two, three, and on, on, on the record, you know, that you uh, have to, to, to say, for, for, I, I, I never prepare a set, I, never, <laughs> I buy my music, I hear my music, but, but I, I want to be as a DJ spontaneous, you know, you don't know how the, how the people are, are reacting, you know, so so and, and and you have to test it. And what, what what records they like? You know, so you know what? If you if you have two uh, back in the days, uh, um, you have just one this sentence. If you have your record box, and I remember you you play in a, in a night, and two records were like um, fitting perfectly together. Like wow, this is like dope dope. Um, one piece. You need to they, know they your married. tracks. Like, they were married forever because they would be in my in, in my hey in my vinyl case um, forever. In in this, uh, I think like like we have to <laughs> to wrap it off. Like this discussion. Sorry, man. Really, like after this panel, like you can talk again <laughs> okay, because like it's over an hour, so maybe oh, okay. maybe wrap it off and get into a phase like Drink after. Beer, the, yeah, you know. That was a Drink sorry, beer. sorry, but I, I don't want to interrupt. But no, 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 no. Okay. It's just um, a short question, uh, maybe for you too, that you're a DJ. Uh, what is the thing that you like the most when you are there with all the machines and you are in front of all the people? What is the thing that you enjoy the most and what is the uh, feeling that you really uh, liked when you are there and you are doing this show for all these people? Uh, if, you, if you can say that in one word, maybe two words to do it this short. I think as a teacher, you're looking for this to, 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 to interact with the people, you know. 
um, it, it can work and it can not work, you know. <laughs> I had both, you know, you, you, you're, you're working with the people and, and you, you feel the energy from the people and, and you, you feel the energy and, and it's really great. And, and you have, can also have the opposite, that, that the people don't, 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 don't move to your sound and, and then you, you feel the negative energy, you know, so it's both. But most of the times you want to have the, you want to have the, you want to have, you want to have a good time with, with the people, you know. This is your job, to, to, to bring the people to dance, you know, that's all. And if the people dance, you feel, you feel glad, so I, it's, it's my opinion, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. For me, the, the one great thing that stands out is definitely making the people dance to music they never heard before. That's <laughs> what, what is the thing for me. And also, with all this discussion about one hour, three hours, six hour sets, we shouldn't forget what the people want and try to give them what they want. If they want uh, just b banger after banger, we have to try to get it together. And if they want a long, long set with lots of ups and downs, then you have to get this together as well. So. You Perfect. should put your ego a little bit in the back, I think, at that point. Perfect. This is a good finishing sentence. Yeah, a good finishing sentence. Then thank you very much, guys. Oh. Thank, thank you. you.